Hello, welcome to another edition of That Millwall Podcast. Uh, something a little bit different at the moment. I'm sure you'll recognise the fellas uh, who are next to me, no, that way and below, from the lives. Uh, they regulars on the, on the live show. I'm sure you've, you've seen them. You've got our Northern correspondent, Ben, that way. Hello, chaps. In the, in, and... in, the, uh, in the words of Unai Emer- Emery, <laughs> good evening. And down uh, there we've got negative Dan, but he does have a smile on his face. Dan, what's the smile all about? It's the first time I've ever seen him smile. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you see me smile a bit more on Saturday. Um it's a good it's you know, listen, there's there's reason to be positive again. Maybe I might I might do my best to lose the nickname. I'm gonna do my absolute best. Well, I, I, look, once you get labelled with something on this show, that's it. It sticks. The, the listeners, the, you, you've had it. So you're going to have to really do something dramatic to, to lose that. The reason the reason why we're doing this, firstly, it's because Dan wanted to do a show. Let's be honest. Um, it was it was his idea. But but it's interesting, guys, because we're a we're a Millwall channel. We do we do the podcast. We do the lives. We don't pay anyone. We, sorry, we don't ask for anyone to pay for our content, which seems to be uh, the the talk of the month. Have you both watched the Joe Edwards interview? Absolutely. I have listened to most of it. I haven't quite managed to get my, my way through the full but full version yet. So uh, I have as well. So we're we're part of the the community that do pay our money to uh, to watch the additional content. Before we move on to the interview itself, thoughts on the fact that there's been a lot of buzz around the managerial talk. There's been a lot of interest in who it's going to be. Us guys, we've been debating it constantly for the last three weeks. And when they unveil the manager, you have to pay to watch what he has to say. Ben, I'll come to you first. What are your thoughts? I, I look. I, I understand the pay for content, why we do it. I get all that, but I think there's certain actions, things that happen where I think it should just be given to everyone for for free of charge. Big things that happen in in the club, not necessarily maybe transfers or anything like that, but but certainly, as I say, big big, big um, things that happen, like a new manager after four years then absolutely, I think that should just be given to everyone for C. They shouldn't be uh, drop-fed snippets on Twitter. You shouldn't just get one-minute clips. You should be able to see the full 27 minutes or whatever it was in the end. But, yeah, I I just think certain certain actions and and, and incidents that happen across a year or or over a few years that should just be free of charge for everyone. Um, So, yeah, I didn't agree with, with, with that being behind the paywall, to be honest. Um, yeah, quite quite similar to to Ben, really. Um, it, you know, I think the, the club in the end did put their hands up and say, you know, um, yeah, we'll, we'll make this one free for everyone because it is an important interview and it is right that we all get to hear it. But I think it kind of left them in a bit of an awkward position where obviously they have the people that pay for the content. They they can't just throw it open. They kind of have to open it, like, let, let them people still get what they pay their money for to get the interview. You know, they got the interview first dibs about 12 hours, I think it was, before everyone else. So, you know, credit to the club. But, you know, I mean, a lot of us pay a lot of money as we do every year. You know, there is the argument that really if we're paying for season tickets, paying for memberships, um, people buy club stuff in the club shop. You buy, like, food and drink in the ground. Um, I know a lot, all of us boys, we go to away games, you know, is there the argument that we put enough money into, into the club already? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to touch on what you said there about the fact that the club held their hands up and made the content free after a while. A part of me thinks that was only because they got a massive backlash. I don't think they necessarily would have done that or they wouldn't have been so keen to to put out messages to say, oh, it's coming for free. Uh, don't worry, you know, we're giving our we're giving our, our paid um, subscribers, if you will, the, the opportunity to listen to it first. There, there is a fine balance, I think, between um, using supporters as supporters and using supporters as customers. And this is one that's really, really touched on, I think, borderline looking towards the fans as customers. And I think when you start to do that, you do start to piss off perhaps the 
older generation and those that perhaps um don't use the the uh, you know the Millwall online facilities they don't want to they don't want to have that kind of stuff that you know a little bit more old school supporters and again that's not I'm not suggesting that it's just those people that don't use it I can imagine there's probably a lot out there that were very keen to listen to what he had to say and and he he wasn't able to um Ben a- anything else on that yeah well I think we, we all pay for Millwall TV right mm-hmm. I, I think I just tried I don't actually okay so so me and you Stephen so a perfect example then, would you be bothered if they'd opened it up having paid your yearly subscription to the likes of letting the likes of Dan or anyone else in the club, any Millwall fan, get that access to that interview at the same time? Honestly, no. At this yeah, point, be- because of the because of the the magnitude of what the, the video exactly. was, if it's you know, you do get the behind the scenes content of, you know, they do the fly on the wall, don't they? They do the little interviews in the week. A couple of weeks ago, they had um, SA and um, uh, Amaku playing FIFA and, and doing little bits like that. I get that. I understand that. But this is a club wide, a supporter wide issue. All the fans pay their money to watch the football team. They want to know who it is that's leading the football team. And I think, you know, not to, to dig anybody out because the club are going to try and make as much money as they can, but to make content for people and to have people engaged, it's it's important for the t- for the club to have the fans on board at the moment because it is uh, a risky the, decision. Exactly my point, really, mate. The, you, sort of, you, your BAU content, if you want to call it that, that's what we pay for, right? I mean, we, we pay it for the extended or for the full 90 minutes to, mm-hmm. to watch the match after you get your extended interviews, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we pay it for. But where your perfect point, Stephen, is what you said, is that this is a, com- a company, a, a, um, a supporter-wide issue, right? It, it's not uh, It's not something that happens every week. It's not something that's going to happen probably every year. In this case, it's something that's happened in, on a four-year cycle almost. So, mm. I, I, yeah, I, I as a paying customer, I would not have been at all asked if they'd have released that as a free interview at the same time for everyone. Mm. Dan, any any final thoughts on that before we actually move on to the interview? <laughs> uh, no, nothing, nothing to really add. I mean, you know, as I said, I think it's you know it is important that everyone gets to hear an interview of, of that importance with the, with the new manager and as well um, James as well. I think that might have been his, was that his first proper sit down with the club, mm-hmm. I believe. So again, two very important interviews. Um, you know, even if you even have half an interest in Millwall, then you you're going to want to. Um, listen to what you know arguably the two most important people in the club are going to want to say absolutely and well we spoke about the fact that they were behind the paywall but let's actually go on to the interviews themselves we'll start with the new the new head coach get that right not not necessarily yeah, manager. That's take a while to get used to isn't it he, he did say Matt, head coach slash manager in the interview to he did fair. Yeah, he did. I, I feel like he, I think he said manager first, then went to head coach because I think it came across remember, as even yeah, he didn't know what, what, what yeah, even he didn't was. know what he's defined as or what he's been told he can say or not. But uh, first impressions, obviously it was a 26 minute interview. I, I actually thought it was a very, very good interview. I thought he spoke very, very well. You you have the, the element of he's been in the Champions League environment, he's been in the Premier League environment, winning environment, losing environment, and he's going to draw on that experience. But it wasn't flashy. It wasn't rubbing it in your face. Uh, you know, we'll, Dan, I'll, I'll come to you. Quite impressive. Yeah, it didn't come across as, you know, like someone who might be too big for his boots coming to Millwall. He seemed mm-hmm. to be very aware of the level of the job he was taking on for his first role in management. Um, so, you know, very impressed by that. And obviously, you know, his experiences speak for himself. So, yeah, overall, I was quite impressed. And, you know, obviously spoke a little bit about what he wants to try and do. But he acknowledges it's not going to be a quick move to what he wants to do in terms of trying to change the play style. And it's important that everyone tries to understand what he's going to do. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, we want to go to Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday and play exactly the same way that Rowett or Barrett would have set us up for that game. We still want to see some change, but at least if we can see change towards what he's trying to achieve, then I think he'll definitely get the time he needs to try and implement it. So, you know, I think there's he speaks very well, which is the main thing. And, you know, I think there's hopefully going to be a lot of positives under Edwards. 
Absolutely. And Ben, uh, one thing that I was quite interested in personally and to get your thoughts on it was the fact that he was very keen to get it out there, that he is well aware that this is his first job as the main man. It's He's not skirting around that. He's not ignoring that fact. Perhaps he's drawing on that and, and, and getting the fans on board early doors to say, look, I, I know it's my first job. I know there might be a little bit of, um, you know, people thinking, oh, is this the right decision? But he's not afraid to, to come out of the shadows of being the number two or, or coaches at youth level and put himself in that position. Yeah, I mean, he, he did say that. He also did say that he has been sort of number one or the, 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 the buck stops with him, with obviously the youth teams. Mm. Um, so he, he did say that as well. So he said he, he's got no worries about the day-to-day -day management of and, and assigning coaches tasks and, and all that sort of thing. So... I thought it was a perfect blend of, look, you're in safe hands. I can do this. I've got experience of doing this, albeit at a, a lower level. And also said, I fully get that this is a much bigger task and opportunity than I've had previously. So, again, I, I just thought it was a perfect yeah, a perfect blend of, of, of what he could have said, really. And also, I think you're right. It wasn't just it wasn't just on that subject. I think it was on a lot of subjects. He was asked the question about Danny McNamara, SA, and Maku, and he mentioned those. And he was asked about um, you know the style of play and and what he was looking to do. I thought he was quite respectful to Rawat. Obviously, we know he knows him, but I thought he was he he did acknowledge the job that Rawat did. But it's interesting how I mean we've spoke about this on the lives, and I tried to get a clip to. to post but i couldn't i'll have to try and do it after where um we spoke about i think on sunday that he's not going to reinvent the wheel he's probably going to try and just push us up the pitch a little bit more and get us on the front foot and lo and behold he knows he's not going to come in and change us automatically but you can see already he can see something that perhaps rowett didn't yeah i think uh, the interview as a whole for me it couldn't have been any more perfect so I, I don't want to you two are going to laugh at that because I've been so positive about him but it really was and I mean that in a sense of I didn't want him to really go on to that interview and say I'm going to tear up the coaching manual of what's been here before I'm going to try and play this expansive football we're going to be playing tick attacker Bart's, Bart's going to be playing rush goalie I didn't want to hear that I wanted I, I almost really wanted to hear what he did say and as you said Stephen he was very respectful of the work that Rowett had done what had been put in place before, how we've been lined up, how we've been coached to play. And he acknowledged that, but also said, look, I understand what the fans want to see. My philosophies are being a lot more on the front foot. So again, it was the perfect answer for me to, to, to hear that he understands how we've been playing, but also what we want to see as a fan base, what he wants to do, put his own identity on the team and acknowledge that we want to be a bit more on the front foot. We want to have a little bit more possession. There was one point that he did make on the possession piece which he said he's not a possession possession hungry freak he's not asked about that it's about using the ball in the right areas and again mm. as Millwall fans that's what I think again we really want to hear because there was a lot of um, comments about how Southampton played and a lot of comments even though they did batter us and it was only a one nil win was sort of sod watching that every week um, and yeah again it was just a perfect answer from me he respected what, what had been in place previously but wanted to, to put his own spin on it and make sure we are a bit more forward thinking and a bit more attacking. I also think, Dan, on the interview as a whole, on how he spoke about the people behind the scenes, and we'll come on to, to James uh, Berylson shortly, but it really feels like with all of this, they've taken their time, They've done their due diligence. They come out and have had a, a real you know, strong shortlist of, of candidates. Um, Joe Edwards spoke about how thorough each of the interviews were. This really does feel like a something that the, obviously the club weren't going to take it lightly. They were obviously going to put put all their efforts and, and make a serious appointment. But it almost feels like the club know, and we all now know, listening to him, that this is a real statement move from the club. This isn't this isn't something they've just come up with last minute. They've really really gone for this and gone for it the way they wanted. Yeah, it's, it's an eye, it's an eye catcher, um, for, you know. Most people outside of Mill to see Mill will go down this what looks like a different route to the traditional Mill manager. You know, I spoke to a lot of people, who are, you know, a little little bit surprised Mill have gone down this route, and I think that includes Mill fans. Um, and you know, I don't think the club would have maybe gone away from their traditional methods 
of who they'd usually go for in terms of, you know, a manager that has experience, um, and, you know, probably lo- knows the league quite well, unless they're absolutely certain it was the right man. Um, and, you know, they obviously seem pretty confident with, that Joe is the right man and got a lot of experience as a number two, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. Let's hope he can, you know, use what he's learned so far to go and, you know, improve less let's, let's I, you know i just want to see some improvement i spoke to a lot of people on on saturday um at the southampton game and you know a lot of people feel like with with the traffic and with the trains and stuff it's becoming a chore almost it was becoming a chore to go and mm. watch Millwall on a saturday at the den obviously i know ben you can't poss- you may not be able to relate as much but i'm sure even with away games you can probably feel it a little bit can't you having to sometimes go quite a distance to see a serve up not the greatest performance um, so, you know, I just want that excitement of, I want, I just want to feel like a kid at Christmas when I go and watch Millwall games, to be honest. I want that excitement of going and going and watch us play every week. I know, I know all joking aside, with disappointment, I think it's been quite evident, right? And we've all been laughing and joking in our WhatsApp group, but we, I've certainly, you can tell, I've, I've felt like that. The Edwards appointment for me, when it was sort of late on in the, in the race and it was either Jones or Edwards, I was very much in the Jones camp and as it kind of went on over the couple of days or it sped up the more I got around it and since his interview I've just been I am really excited now about what the future is going to look like look I as we said it's probably not going to be a very quick turnaround in, in what he wants to do but it has it has brought an excitement back and I'm, I, I am really looking forward to Saturday I think Edwards has said that as well. It might not be as quick turnaround. Maybe it's mm. not as quick as he wanted because of the personnel. He probably knows that we ain't going to do a, a wholesale load of squad changes in January. Um, but, you know, it, it's going to give him a, a bit of time to look at his players. You know, obviously, I think the lineup maybe in a month once he's had a chance to look at players over the international break and stuff. And I, I think we've been hard for about a month in a month's time. That might be a, a little bit telling, I think. Yeah, I, I think. One of the big things for me was that, and you can always you can always tell that the interview come out, and there was people on Twitter going Sheffield Wednesday away tick, or just got my Sheffield Wednesday tickets after that. I, I'm, I'm in, I'm kind of in that camp to be honest. I when I was kind of I'm in an R and about it, and then on Saturday after the game, there was obviously a lot of noise, and then I think the tweet got put out on Sunday, and I was like, yeah, oh, you know what, like I can't miss the managers mm. or the new head coach's first game. And and the thing with that is that's a that's the perfect response I was looking for because there's going to be other supporters that are doing that go into the away game and there'll also be supporters that as you say do see going to Mill as a chore it is difficult to park it is difficult to get to the ground but people are going to want to be at that first home game after the after the international break because they're going to want to see him they're going to want to see the changes that he's implemented okay there'll be a few that go on Saturday but it's different having your full fan base for your first home game so I think it definitely has brought up um, a lot of excitement it will come on to the fixtures and perhaps we'll come on to you know shortly after what we might do in January um, now we've got new, a new manager and what promises may or may not have been made to him but moving sticking to what he said but moving on the same similar kind of lines he spoke very highly of Steve Kavanagh James Berylson uh, Billy Taylor uh, Alex Aldridge, um, one of which James Berylson gave his first, what I what we discussed before the show, first sit down interview as as Millwall chairman on, on his own, uh, and once again another interview that I thought I thought uh, Mr Berylson spoke very very well, Dan. Yeah, obviously, probably hasn't been the easiest few months for the Berylson family, mm. um, and you know I feel like this change was probably not something they'd obviously planned for. And it's obviously put a lot lot of pressure on him, but, you know, he's spoken really well. He seems very confident in his choice and we can, you know, we will always get behind James while he's here just for what his dad did at the club on its own, you know? So I said not long after it happened that if he makes half a good impression of his dad, he's still going to be loved at this football club. Um, you know, and I thought for a first sit down interview it was really, really positive. Um, and it's good to see that open communication with the fans as well on something that is such an important topic. Yeah. And I think, Ben, a couple of subjects that he, he, he mentioned how much he's obviously his dad loved the club. We knew that. But, you know, he's, it's still something that I think needed to be 
needed to be to be said just to reconfirmed i think and also the way that he spoke about it's not he's not really just coming in and been thrown at the deep end okay his emotions might might have been because obviously he's lost his dad but he has been in and around the football club for a considerable amount of time so it's not just it's not like he knows nothing and he doesn't know anyone it's just perhaps similar to joe edwards have going from being the maybe the the bridesmaid all the time to to the bride you almost get the feeling that james berylson's fallen into the same category yeah definitely and, and he touched upon that didn't he and he said that obviously he was he was there with his dad and he was on the board but it was never him making all the decisions and it was always it would always lie with his old man and he said he spoke about how well Steve Kavanagh had worked with him over the last few months and sort of was was teaching him more about football which I thought was quite interesting because he he obviously spoke about how often he did come over with with John um but but yeah, look, in going back to the, the appointment of Joe Edwards, I think it would have been very easy for James Belson to go down a safe route for his first appointment and just go, look, I don't want any backlash for this. I can't afford the, the club to the fall, fall out of the league. I just want stabilised this year or for the next couple of years and then, then we'll kind of see where we're at. But for him to make such a ballsy appointment says a lot about him and hopefully a lot about his ambitions for for what he wants um, from, from the club. So... Yeah, fair, fair play to him. I thought it was a very good interview. Obviously, he spoke about his his love, or his dad's love for the club. And look, if he's half as committed as, as John was, I think we'll be in safe hands. But yeah, no, it was a really, really, really nice and, and important interview to, to hear. It, it was. And I almost feel like the appointment is something that I think his dad would have approved of. It's a, it's a real gutsy... You know, American. Uh, you know, American public. They like a, a bold, brave, you know, person. They like to make decisions, and I feel like James has really. I think he's done the right thing. I think he's he's tried to put his own, you know, authority on, on his role. He wants to put his own authority on the club where he wants the club to go, but he's still trying to fulfil what his dad wanted for the club, which was ultimately, you know, well, to, to well, find a top success. We'll, we'll know about that, mate, when we see the uh, James Belson cigar, cigar picture in the uh, changing rooms when we've just made the playoff final, having been look, in Leeds in the semis. Look, I, I, I've I've been saying this: that the Joe Edwards effect has has certainly been rolling through through Millwall fans. Before before we move on very quickly, I just wanted to. He said we had about six. six what was it? Sixty applications for the job. Yeah, mm. that was. You know, I mean, I don't know whether that's half our fan base who play football manager. Um, you know, I feel like... I can, can confirm been... I didn't send my CV in, unfortunately. <laughs> I should um, have. We, we are also unable to confirm if our very own Mickey Simpson did send in his CV as well, obviously. He was an early front runner for the job. Um, Skybet <laughs> actually refused price. to give the odds because they thought he was so nailed on to get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was surprised by that. But also not because it, I mean, look, it, it was an attractive job. We we spoke about that at length for our multiple show, shows. But yeah, sixty does seem like a lot. But I mean, it could have been, as you said, Dan, could have been me, you, Mickey, Stephen, all the lads from the podcast. But um, no, and, and again, just touch on the point of the sort of thorough process. It it it, it seemed like it really was, and they weren't going to take this appointment lightly. So the fact that that Joe Edwards did get through that does lead me to believe that he he was the best man or the club thought, thought that he was the best man for the job, which is, which is good. I think just the last bit on that, you know, you, you'll never know the names. Obviously you'll know a couple. We know Jones was in the running and Bill and people like that, but you're never ever going to know all of the names, but it, it is an attractive job. It, it's, it's a London club based in, in, you know, in the championship. It's, it's, um, an opportunity to to build on relative success. Obviously, success would be the playoffs, but it has been relatively successful to a point. And I think someone needed to come in, and perhaps this is the the kickstart we need. Um, we're now going to just do something a little bit different. We have a we have a, a theory. Um, <laughs> we've got someone. We've got uh, one of our our expert panelists in Ben has a theory on this. the appointment up, of, of, of Joe Edwards. Ben, hit us with your theory. Um, just, or, just for the record as well, we haven't heard this. So, oh yeah, we don't we, know. When we burst out into laughter, 
you put, no, it's, 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 it's not. It's not out there. It's not nutty at all. After listening to the interview, I rang my dad straight away, and I said that, that there was a few things that Rowett had said when he left. A few things that have come out that we now know in terms of Rowett doing his pro license with Edwards and. Um, Edwards knowing Aldo or Aldo recommending Edwards for the job and Edwards came down to the Bristol City game. I actually think this could have been in the pipeline a lot longer than we may have given it credit for. Not saying the timing of Rowett leaving, but it just screamed to me that Rowett made a, might have made a recommendation. The comment that Rowett made that made me think of it was that when he left and did his talk sport um, interview, he said that the club wanted to go in a different direction. Um, and he just felt like it was the right time to move. And this different direction couldn't be any different to what we've had previously. So I, I just, look, I'm putting two and two together and just doing a bit of pyro work and just going, yeah, ha has this been in the pipeline for a bit longer? Did Aldo maybe, or as Rowett said, look, I'm going to leave at the end of the year at Christmas, whatever it might be, but it's someone that I work with on my pro licence. Aldo knew him, et cetera, et cetera. There was just a couple of things that, that had been said that I thought actually, yeah, this might have been in the pipeline for a, a lot longer than than we've given it credit for. And also the fact that I know we do all of our business very, very quietly, but the fact that we didn't want to, that his name come out sort of two days before the, the appointment really, or three days before, and then he's got the job. It, 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 it may, look, I might be talking absolute bollocks. It's highly likely, but there was just a few things that were said and, um, yeah, just made me think, yeah, had we lined Edwards up for the job, yeah, maybe at the end of the season when Rowett was going to walk away or or whatever, and it just got sped up by bad results, us obviously doing what we did at Norwich to him and things like that. So, yeah, look, a complete shot in the dark, but it just, there was a few things that made me think, yeah, had it had it been lined up, don't know what your thoughts are on that. The only the only thing that, I'm, I'm not dis I'm not disagreeing at all. The one thing that I really want to focus on just on that, that I agree with 100% is the fact that the name wasn't on any of the betting odds. It wasn't on, no one had mentioned him. No, let, let's be honest. No one knew of him. There would have been, no, no, no one, no one would have ever, ever in a month's Sundays thought that he, he was the man, but then somehow went from that to being the man. I think there certainly was something definitely going on early doors because all of the noise, you know, Richard Cowley does not post things out, you know, without the club's say. We, we, we know that. All the pictures, everything was Jones or Bill or Muscat, uh, not necessarily from Richard, but they were all, they were the names. And that's exactly how Mill will want it to be. They want all the focus on this side. So over here, they can do what they're actually, their business that they're actually, most, they're most trying to conduct. Most, yeah, most, yeah, all the time. It's well, on transfers. It, 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 you, you look at his, his pedigree, right, Stephen? I, it just, again, it just made me think, if we're shouting about this young manager, it's the way the, the, football, the football world's going, right, is, is hiring young coaches. We've seen the success of Steve Cooper and Kieran McKenna. The list goes on, right, of the, sort of or England coaches and um, highly thought of um, coaches that work at big clubs. And I just thought, if we come out and say, oh, yeah, we want Joe Edwards, you've got Birmingham, who were looking for a new manager at that time. Obviously, Bristol City, very quickly we're looking for a new manager and I, QPR. It, I, it, yeah QPR it, I, if it was all kept hush hush because he'd been lined up and he was always going to get it then we, we did a great job at that but yeah as I say there was just a few things that were said and it was really the row it oh the club want to go in a different di bit of a different direction that made me think well if it's mutual it would just been well I thought it was time to leave but he did say that and I was like well, okay so did, does he just mean new manager at the time? I just thought, yeah, obviously just new manager. But now it's come out and it is a completely different direction. So, yeah, just a, as I say, just a, a theory, probably a wild one, probably very far from the truth, but just uh, doing some detective work and putting some comments and things together. It was interesting that he said that Aldo put him for, put him up for the job as well or, or put his CV in, in the ring. And um, just to add on to what you've said, Ben, was it, I think it was Rowett, but it might not have been because obviously... Didn't Rowett say that on the pro license course that him and Edwards are on, the two outstanding coaches on it were Edwards and McKenna? Is that what is that what Rowett said, or was that a quote? I hadn't, from I hadn't, had, hadn't seen that quote. Or I, don't know I hope Rowett I'm not making that. that quote out of thin air because I feel like I have. Stephen, have I made that quote up, or have I seen that somewhere? I think you're waffling, mate. Because I've, I, not oh, I've seen that somewhere. 
Can some when this goes up tomorrow? Can someone please let me know if I've just pulled that out of thin air and I've I've got far too carried away with this Edwards appointment, or if I've actually seen that, please. Well, that leads me in very very nicely. Firstly, yes, if you can find that quote, please send it to us. If you can't, then comments get at Dan because he's just making stuff up now to, to just try to be. Up. He's trying to get the hype up. But talking about uh, individuals that are getting a little bit excited. Um, we're going to move on to the Sheffield Wednesday game. I'm going to do this in a slight different order. I'm not just going to shout myself out on Twitter. I'm going to give you guys a shout out as well because I don't want to be seen as, as you know, you know, just trying to promote myself because that's not what we're about here. But in the week, I posted, I, <laughs> I posted uh, a tweet uh, at SPJ91, a screenshot of a WhatsApp conversation where an individual had texted me in the week that we were going to win 6-0 and Tom Bradshaw was going to score four goals and Billy Mitchell was going to score two goals. Now, before, I did say on the tweet... Before we go on to that, can mm -hmm. we do a poll, get a poll out, and we reveal who it is at the end of the show? But if you're listening, can we get a poll out? Oh, it's not live, is it? Fuck. No, no, it's not. Well done, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... So what what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, what we'll do for the listeners to, just to see if, no, 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 no. We'll keep that in there. But just to see if they, if they're actually listening at this point, I'm going to tell you all that one of the gentlemen that are in this uh, podcast with me were the people that sent that message uh, about Millwall winning 6-0. We're not going to reveal it just yet. You're going to have to watch or listen till the end of the show. But if you are on YouTube and you've made it to this point, if you can quickly write a, a comment and no cheating, don't fast forward to the end. Um, which one of these two was the person that sent the message to me uh, that Millwall were going to win 6-0 with Bradshaw scoring four goals and Billy Mitchell scoring two? Uh, their Twitter handles, for, for the sake of giving them abuse, uh, whichever way you want to go, you've either got at Sexton Dan 2 or at Greeny underscore Ben. So and can I just point out, this is very unfair from the off because Ben's on private, so he isn't going to accept anyone because they're just going to want to abuse him. That is true. Um, no, I, I, if anyone's got yeah. in their bio, I, I will accept them. I am very That's, accepting on my profile. What we'll do is anyone that does follow Ben already, if it is Ben... Uh, Dan, stop trying to deflect because you know yeah, I've, I've, I'm, 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 I'm not going to fall for any of this, and the listeners aren't either. Uh, if anyone that does follow Ben, just give him abuse anyway. He's fine; he can take it. <laughs> um, but anyway, moving on to Sheffield Wednesday. Before we come to the predictions, we'll do that at the end so we can do the big reveal to see which one of you two look like an idiot. Um, are we expecting uh, anything other than a 94th minute Lee Gregory one nil? are we well, re realistically if look, we're, we're all real mill fans so if <laughs> if you're anything but that um no it's 100 percent going to be a 94th minute lee gregory winner um but and barry bannon will have some contribution as well because he always seems yeah, to have a worldy of a game against us or or he'll stick one in the top corner from 25 yards because he has a habit of doing his, that against us his doesn't red he? card being rescinded as well mm. um uh, <sighs> I think it's going to be a tougher game than we think. And I, it's going to be an interesting game, actually, because we, their manager's not long been in charge. It's going to be an interesting game from a standpoint. You've got two now young managers. I think he's 34. Um, 30... Ooh, yeah, I think he's 35. So, yeah, you go. So, another young manager, another one with um, a good background. He was at Leipzig, Southampton and Bayern. So, yeah. Uh, another young manager I'd imagine is going to come in or has been into Chip or Wednesday now for a few weeks and trying to change their play style. Look, I, I I just would like to think there's going to be a bit of a new manager bounce and the players are half as buzzing as I am with the Joe Edwards appointment. Then I think it's going to be a good game and I think we'll win. I, I, I think, I think before we, you know, sort of get too too ahead of ourselves i think we all are appreciative of the fact that edwards is going to try and implement his his philosophy his style but in his own words maybe drip feed it into the players rather than just go gung-ho from from game one i can't imagine us lining up too differently in the game perhaps being this expansive you know all-out attack football but we're all going to the game on Saturday. I'll come to my, what I think in a little while. But Dan, 
realistically and being trying to be as as um level-headed as possible realistically i don't think an awful lot's going to change in game one personally hopefully uh i just hope he keeps the with the four at the back at least like you know gives us another body in the attacking areas um yeah i'd it's, I don't think he's going to make wholesale changes. He is in the position where he has more players that are coming back to fitness. Um, and if he has seen our last few games, he might have an idea of, you know, players that he might want to put back into the starting lineup um, that might not have been able to play recently. You know, maybe maybe you look at the defence and maybe, go, maybe we're lacking a bit of leadership there. Maybe if Hutch is ready, Hutch might get a game. Um, he might think we might need a bit more speed at the back and might, might put Leonard in, or he might just think Bradshaw needs a rest. Obviously, he actually hobbled off against Southampton. We're yet to hear if he's OK, um, which could put um, either mine or Ben's prediction in, into doubt about if Bradshaw's going to score four, because he might not even play. So, who knows? Um, but yeah, I, th- I don't think, you know, we're just we're just going up there and we want to see Millwall. We, we just want to see Millwall have a go. I think that's that's the main thing. I want to just see a sign of what Edwards wants to do. That's the main thing. I'm not expecting us to be playing vertical, ticky-tacker um, football with Danny McNamara popping up in the in the six-yard box every every attack. No, and I think, personally, uh, again, it's trying to curb the optimism and the hope of a new manager and the new manager bounce with knowing what players we actually have. It's not like he's, he's got like an extra five brand new players that are going to be able to change us dramatically. You are still going to see, uh, you know, probably your Murray Wallace, your Jake Coopers, you know, that, uh, you know, that are still going to be in the side. There's, there's no, there's no getting away from that. But for me, I wanted to go, it's my first time going to Hillsborough. So I wanted to go anyway, but for me now it is, as you say, just, you just want to hope that the players may have taken on just something that we can see that there is change coming, that there is a more of a front foot philosophy. You know, I, I'm looking at when he was talking, Edwards, in his interview, I, I, the first three players that come to my mind about being on the front foot and using the ball better were George Saville, Casper Denor and Zian Fleming. To me, they were the three that straight away come to me and thought they're the ones he's talking about, people that can make something happen, you know, in this team, in the middle of the park, get us moving forward, something that we, we don't quite see often enough. Ben, um, I, I'll come to you a- again. I wouldn't expect wholesale changes. We don't know perhaps injuries at this point. Obviously, maybe it's a couple of days before that that kind of news comes out. Will you be expecting to see many changes from the, the, the team that played against Southampton last week? No, no, I just think, just for all the reasons you just mentioned there, really, mate, I think, Firstly, he's he's come out and basically said that's not going to happen, right? It is going to be a slow process. So he's not, we're not going to be playing 4 3 3 um, and we're going to be going nuts going forward. I can't see it. It's probably going to be a very similar formation, a very similar lineup, unless the, the injured players or the, the players that are coming back from injury have trained well this week. Um, I, I can't see it being being miles off the starting lineup that we've had at Watford and Southampton, to be perfectly honest, mate. Um, just be interesting to see if it is just subtle things, like a, maybe just positions, that, as you said, like where how's Fleming going to fit into this? I'm assuming he's going to be the, the main man in terms of that attacking, forward-thinking threat now. Does it does his role change at all? Um, does it change at all if Bradders is, isn't going to be fit? So, yeah, look, it's going to be interesting. Um, but do I think it's going to be a change of formation, a massive change of personnel? No, I can't see it. No, and on that, on the change of personnel, a little bit of a road question. I hadn't meant I thought about this and I didn't, I purposely didn't prep you guys on this one because I'm going to put you on the spot. And Dan, I'm going to come to you first. With the change in manager, do we expect a change in captain? At the moment, Sean Hutchinson is club captain. Obviously, he's been injured and the armband has been given to Jake Cooper in his absence. Are we expecting that to be changed or do you think that's something that Edwards is likely to keep the same for the rest of the season? I mean, in my humble opinion for it as well, I don't personally think Cooper is a fantastic leader of the team and you know maybe we aren't seeing the best of Cooper at the minute and maybe that's because he's got that extra pressure of being captain on his shoulders um so I think if Hutchinson's fit and Hutchinson plays I don't see much change there but I think he might look to give the armband to to someone else if Hutchinson isn't on the pitch or if he just chooses not to play 
Hutch um, for whatever reason. So, you know, I think George Savoy is obviously someone who's been mentioned. I do think he, he would be a good contender. Um, and, you know, I think Harding has done well. Um, but obviously, it's just a thing. I, I have a slight reservation. Harding has only been, at the, he's only started, what, about eight games for us, I think. I feel that that would be quite soon to make him captain personally. So, you know, I think if Hutch isn't on the pitch, I would like to see George Savile probably be the man to maybe take the armband on. Um, but one one player that you didn't mention that I'd like to see, and I just going back to your previous question, uh, on, onwards, I think he's going to make a couple of changes just to be like, you know, I'm the boss now. This is what I want to do. And one player I'd like to see, and given he likes the youth players, I think Adam Malachi might get his moment because Murray Wallace didn't have a great game against Southampton. Longman was pretty pants when he came on and lucky not to be sent off, to be completely honest. I think he might give Malachi a run out. Yeah, I, I, I certainly think. And also, I don't know if you've noticed this, but he seems to be in a lot of the pictures and the videos that have gone up on Instagram and Twitter. Adam Malachi, I'm talking about here. He's, he, they, it's almost as if there's been a little bit of a shift in focus on him uh, as an individual, I, I know there's other players that are in the pitches and I'm, again, maybe putting two and two together and getting five. But I, I certainly think he's one that, that Edwards will, will be looking at. Um, ben, I'm going to really put you on the spot now. Um, on the, uh, Again, back with the captaincy. Hutchinson is fit. He goes to the manager. He's club captain. Do we think Joe Edwards sticks with Sean Hutchinson as club captain? Yeah, I, 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 listen... Hutch has had his limitations probably over the last year now because of injury and he's maybe just on a bit of a decline. But I still think he has been such a focal point in the team and obviously centre half for us for so long. I, I'm, I'm not taking the, the armband or the club captaincy off off Hutch. Um, I, I almost see him now as that real conduit between him and uh, between Edwards and the, and the players almost like he, he's. He's a stalwart, really, in 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 that in that team, and mm. I, yeah, I, I'd imagine he's going to just be that senior state, so maybe take on a bit more of that Alex Pierce sort of role that we saw him um, take on towards his time with us. But yeah, I, I, I'm not taking it off Hutch. I, I love Hutch. He he might not have been at the top of his form over the last year or so, but yeah, I'm not taking it off him. I agree. I think it should remain with Sean Hutchinson, but I do think there needs to be a rethink, as Dan said, when Hutchinson isn't in the starting 11 and he's not on the pitch, I think there does need to be a little bit of a rethink as to who the armband goes to because instantly just going to Jake Cooper, for me, doesn't quite work. It, it, it's not a, it's not the move. And I, th- and I think Dan was absolutely spot on. I do think it adds a little bit more pressure onto Cooper that he just doesn't need. He just doesn't need that as part of his game. So um, I'm going to come back to the predictions. Again, I'm keeping the listeners on tenterhooks at this point. You know, they're, they're desperate to know between you two which one it was that predicted 6 0. Um, just another road question before we, we, we've, we finish on the predictions and what, you know, uh, sort of wrap up the show. Moving forward under Joe Edwards, our, our next six games, uh, I've got them up here. So we've got Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday, then we have the international break. Um, we then go into commentary at home. Ipswich away, Sunderland at home, uh, Cardiff away and Leicester away. Now, on paper, that's four of the top eight inside his first six games. I put it in the chat uh, a couple of days ago. It's a little bit of a tough start for him, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, Sheffield Wednesday are a little bit rejuvenated. Now, Coventry, I think they're yet to click into gear, but, you know, that still might just catch him at a good time. Um, Cardiff's a tough place to go this season. Sunderland have been playing some good football, and I think probably the less said about Ipswich and, and Leicester, particularly them going forwards and speaking for our defence this season, probably the better for us. Um, so, you know, I, I think I'm going to go with a, a bold seven points from the first six games, which I think we prob- I'd, I'd probably take, to be honest. And Ben, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you the same question, and I'm gonna bolt on another one, and then I'll come back to Dan on that as well. So, first six games for for Joe Edwards, how many points do you think we're we're likely to pick up? And I get that we're in November, so it might be a little bit tricky. But moving f- further ahead into the January transfer window, 
do you think that he has been given any assurances on what kind of budget or what kind of players he may be able to bring in? So his, his first six games, I was just writing them down here. I've got eight points and I've put a win Saturday, a draw against Coventry. I've watched Coventry on telly a few times. They're, they're in a false position. Um, they will pick up soon. I'd imagine they'll do something similar to what they did last year and start shooting right up the table. But I've put a point there. I think we'll get beat by Ipswich. I've actually put, we'll beat Sunderland. Um, I don't know why. Um, draw at Cardiff and, and, and a loss to Leicester, obviously. Um, but yeah, if, if we got anywhere near that, I'll be absolutely delighted. It might be a bit ambitious and might be just the initial Joe Edwards effect. Um, and looking at January, it, I think it'd just be more interesting to see what he does. Obviously, he was the, the loan manager at Chelsea, wasn't he, for a while? Andy Myers had, had, a, had a role to play in, in the loan management piece as well. So it'll be interesting to see whether we go back to his old stomping grounds and try and get any loan players in. There's obviously already been talk about Charlie Creswell returning. Um, if we go and do that, it, it, he's, it, he's won me over all well. It'll have won everyone over already, I think, if we go and do that with our January business. Um, but yeah, it'll just be interesting to see whether he does go back to Chelsea and if we can nick any of their youngsters. It's not very often that I want them to succeed or go and spend more money. But if they want to go and spend another billion pound on some 20 year olds, I'm, I'm more than happy if they're going to be coming to us. And Dan, I mean, it's again, it's November. Transfers is still, we're still in that part of the season where it's a little bit too far to be thinking about it but it will be a conversation that would have been had are we expecting joe edwards to be particularly busy or well joe edwards and alex aldridge to be particularly busy in the january transfer window i think they'll want to get a couple of bodies in just just to freshen it up a little bit more than anything else um you know i think he's probably watched us he would have done his homework and you know he might have a few different ideas as to styles and stuff he wants to play um, and, you know, clubs probably already done a lot of work on, on targets and stuff. I can't see wholesale changes. I think there might be a few more changes in the summer. That's something we discussed on Sunday show uh, on our Sunday night live about, you know, maybe it is weird and edging towards out with the old um, some of the old guard that have been here since the Harris days now. Um, but I can't see wholesale changes in January. I can just see a couple of players probably tapping into that loan market. Um, so I don't just think it's going to be Chelsea. I think obviously being at England under 20, he's going to have some good contacts from mm. working with players there and probably other academies around the country. I think that's the big thing, isn't it? It's, it's, that's part of the excitement with the, with the appointment, because it's going to be, it's an opportunity for us to be able to tap into, you know, those kind of marketplaces that we perhaps, we perhaps wouldn't, really get to like I, I, no disrespect to Gary Rower but you couldn't imagine him knocking on Chelsea's door and having a real opportunity of getting a really promising youngster and again it's no disrespect to him but it, it's not where he's from a lot of his transfer dealings were at Birmingham were in you know Derby Stoke the clubs that he'd already been at whereas you do that with Edwards you kind of knock well, as you said you're knocking on the door of Chelsea you're knocking on the door at Everton you're knocking on the door at England under 20 it's it's um you know, it, it's an exciting, it's an exciting time. Uh, ben, anything to add? Um, not, yeah, I think perfectly summed up there. It was more just about how he gets the best out of some of the younger players we already have. Do we think some of the changes he will implement? We've already mentioned Malachi coming in. Do we think the likes of Essa and Amaku now are going to get more game time? I personally of the opinion we I was talking about this on Saturday after the game with the people that sit around me I was under the pressure and the impression at the time it was going to be Nathan Jones that that was coming in obviously we we thought that that may be the case and I at that point had said that I thought Amaku would have been the one that perhaps got more game time under Jones than perhaps what SA SA would now it's Edwards that's come in I'm going to flip that around. I actually think it's more likely to be SA that that gets a little bit more game time. And I'm not saying that Amaku won't, but I think SA will go above him in the pecking order, whereas I thought under a different manager, it would be the other way around. And last piece for you on the youngsters and just the interview of Edwards. I thought it was very interesting what he actually said about the youngsters that are in around the squad now. 
where he mentioned that it's not only about giving them the platform to succeed and to get into the first team, it's very important that they know their roles and responsibilities when they get there. So it'd be interesting to see if they do come into the side, do they just generally perform a bit differently because they maybe don't have to do the defensive side of things that, that Rowett wanted them to do a lot more. Um, but yeah, I thought that was quite interesting from his interview and just how he spoke about the youngsters. Yeah, I think, again, you know, we, we, we know the success that Millwall have had recently with the academy and the under-23s and, and, you know, they had a good season last year. I didn't see them a lot, so I can't, I'm not an expert, but what I did see of them, those young lads were attack, attack, attack. They were they were asked to get forward. They were asked to create chances. They, you know, they wasn't, you know, on the edge of their own box clinging on for dear life to try and, you know, hold on to a point or, or something. They were asked to create chances to, 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 you know, influence the game positively. So maybe there's something in that. Maybe Edwards will look at that and go, nah, we're not, I'm not having, I'm not having Romain Essay tracking back and being on the edge of his own box. You know, we're not doing this. We want him, we want him further up the field, which is where we want to see him. We want to see him at the other end of the pitch. It's, it's the same as Fleming sometimes when he gets put out wide and he has to track back. You're thinking, well, I don't want you 80 yards from goal. I want you 30 yards from goal. So it, it is interesting. Obviously, there's going to be a lot made of the fact that Edwards is used to working with younger players. So there might be a little bit more um, trust put in SA in Amaku, Malachi, Alex Mitchell when he comes back. But it is certainly one that I, I would expect perhaps to, to see a couple of the youngsters get a little bit more game time. Again, not, not on Saturday, um, which then brings me back full circle to Saturday. The Lions are going into the game on a five-match unbeaten run away from home. Admittedly, four draws. Um, for the listeners that have made it this far, um, I'm going to ask the boys for their predictions and I'm going to ask the individual who predicted 6-0 with um, Tom Bradshaw to score four goals and Billy Mitchell to score two to reveal yourself. I feel like I'm on um, blind date. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what is it? Um, what was the one? Um, no likey, no likey. Single man, reveal yourself. That's what it felt like. <laughs> um, if anyone knows my love for Brad Sean, hopefully you all do now, listeners, then you should have known it was me by the fact that I said Brad has been 4 4 and the fact that he's probably going to be injured and not playing. So, um, no, look, very much in the Joe Edwards effect, um, as we laughed about earlier, there's certainly a buzz around, certainly an, an excitement as we get closer to Saturday. It's not the Joe Edwards effect is, is is dwindling far from it, but very much um, the actual proposition of playing Sheffield Wednesday away is probably getting more real. Um, I did say 6-0. I would take any sort of win on Saturday, to be honest. I'd even take a point, probably. And Dan, now you're safe from the listeners' wrath of, of not being the individual that went for 6-0. What are your thoughts? Slightly less. I'll, I'll go for 4. I'll go for 4-0, I think, just to... Uh keep it you know i think i think brad is to get all four even if he's on the treatment table sounds about right um no you yeah, know listen um we we do need to get a result because i know you've said we're five unbeaten away from home but i think we're also about five games without a win now aren't we i think mm. our last was our last win plymouth mm -hmm. yeah wow Wow, okay. And that so, seems a long time ago, doesn't it? it really, I, I, I was there it was, and but, it seems a mm. really long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that was certainly a stat. We all tweeted about it, didn't they, after the Watford game, five unbeaten. And it really does kind of deflect from the fact that it's four draws. Yeah. Um, it, it's not, a, it's, a, it's, it's great, but it's not as good as it sounds. Um, I had said earlier on, if you didn't expect anything other than a Lee Gregory 94th minute winner on Saturday, then you're doing it all wrong. You, you just, you're just doing it all wrong. I cannot bring myself to predict on a video that we were not going to win a game because I can't, I can't put it out there that we're going to lose. I just can't do it. So I am going to go for a nervy 2-0 um, perhaps some later goals, late goals from from those off the bench. I think I, I say this a lot. I think we might see a goal from one of the defenders. Um, the set pieces have been a lot. I think set we might see that. Harding. Again, uh, someone who's who's come in and been been a revelation. I think it really attacks the ball well. I also think we might just see Kevin Nisbet 
um, get on the score sheet. I've just got a feeling he's going to go into the international break on a high. So, um, two nil Millwall. Um, we've got. So I've gone two. Dan's gone thing, four. Actually, can I just can I just jump in quickly? Um, yep. Bradshaw is in the Wales squad that got announced today. So maybe I'm sure there's some music to Ben's is, um, and probably music to a lot of people's is, but in particular Ben's is. Maybe that injury isn't as bad as we as we first feared. Um, and you know, Ben, ben snuck a one 0 in as well after he's six 0 So <laughs> I'm go, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna go a two one. We've we've scored a, we've conceded two late goals in the last two games respectively. I think it's our turn to get a late winner. I'm not having this. Ben said six. You said four. I said two. We we're not we're not skirting around. We're not changing that. I also think on Bradshaw just before we we we, we wrap up and I'll come to your final thoughts that he looked all smiles in the pictures and in training. Bradshaw. He didn't yeah. look like. I mean, again, pictures are only you, you you can't tell an awful lot from it. But he looked okay and he was taking part in the session. So hopefully he'll be in the travelling party and at least in the squad um, or in Ben's sake the starting eleven uh, come Saturday. Dan. This show was your idea. Uh, I'm not going to take any credit for it whatsoever. Any final thoughts? No, I just look forward to seeing seeing everyone up there on su- uh, sa- not Sunday, Saturday, bloody hell. This week feels like it's going far too slowly for my liking. Um, no, looking forward to getting up there Saturday. My first time going to Hillsborough, um, you know, and I feel like even despite the, the not great form, we all kind of go up there with a bit of optimism. So let's hope the players can tune into that as well. And Ben, final words from you? Perfectly summed up by young Daniel there, I think. Um, no, look, I, I think we already said it. I'm really looking forward to Saturday. Um, even just going at all recently, but as we said earlier, it has been a bit of a chore at times. I think everyone just feels like a little bit, yeah, a little bit more relieved and a little bit happier just even with the appointment. So, look, it'll be really interesting to see what Edwards does in his first games. Just a shout out to the fans that are making the trip up there. If it isn't working after the first 15 minutes, let's not abuse the poor fella, um, like in typical Millwall fan fashion. Um, but yeah, look, really looking forward to it. It'd be great to have a couple of beers with you fellas. And um, if anyone is up there and sees us, as you always say, Stephen, what well, more importantly, come and give Dan a hug. So I hear there weren't many hugs at Watford. No, just just our very own Joe Zamper and a few when the goal went in. So, I mean, I'll take a few more when the goals go in on Saturday. <laughs> That's that's absolutely. I think it summed up quite well from you two guys. It's actually also my first time to Hillsborough. I think I've been to quite a few grounds, but I've never actually ventured that to, to Sheffield Wednesday. So it's the first time for me. Um, echo what Ben said. I think you know, first 10 15 minutes, it might be a nervy start, it might be a good start. You don't know, but the, the manager and the players need our support. Obviously, it's one game going into the international break, it would be good to, to win it, but. We'll, um, you know, hopefully the support, the travelling support, us guys included, can can give them as much much of a backing as possible. Um, this has been that Millwall podcast. This is a little bit different. We haven't really done many of the the pre records uh, over the last couple of months or so. If this is something that you would enjoy, you'd like us to have a conversation that perhaps um, without the fan interaction, obviously that's what makes us a little bit different. That's what we enjoy doing. We like the banter, but we thought we'd try something a little bit different. If you want any more of this. Drop a like, comment, let us know. We're more than happy to take feedback on board. Uh, This should be out as a podcast tomorrow morning. It should go out on YouTube um, later on in the afternoon. So that will be Thursday for when you're listening or watching. If you are interested, we do run a live show on a Friday and a Sunday. This week, it'll be eight o'clock on Friday. So come and join us. It's a really good fun. We've got a few listeners that that get involved and give us a little bit of stick, but that's that's what it's all about. We don't really take it too seriously. And, and as and always, hope, hopefully as well this Saturday, and this puts extra pressure on Mickey now, we're hopefully getting some bloke who's done a lot of research on Joe Edwards football can maybe tell us a little bit more about it. Absolutely. And on that note, and you throw Mickey under the bus um, and we will make it known that it is you that's thrown him under the bus, not me and Ben. Um, that's been that Millwall podcast. Please like and subscribe across Twitter, across YouTube, across Instagram. We're all over the place. You can't miss us. Come and say hello on Saturday at Sheffield Wednesday. And if you fancy it, listen to us on Friday night. Come on, you Lions. <laughs>